Hey guys, um, welcome back to my channel. Um, so far is pretty quiet. I'll be able to do a better video. Um, like I promised, I was going to show you guys how to make your own how to draw book. And then I'm going to go through, I'm going to show you this great book, which you guys got to get. This is really cool by Tom Richmond, how to draw characters or any of you that's interested in drawing characters. And like I said, little by little, I'm going to show you um, different books and art, you know, uh, techniques and methods that I have. I still got a long way to go. So, so far, I only showed you like probably three or four books. Anyway, all right, let's get back to what I was um, trying to mention here. This is what I usually do. Um, and this is my how to draw pages that I've done. I've done like three pages. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue like probably the corner on this side right here. And then after that, I'm going to start gluing it on this book, which I already, you know, have done already. So, so far this has been glued all together and, uh, I just got to fix this a little bit. It's a little bit damaged. So I just put some glue here and what I do is I leave kind of like a space and that's what I do. I leave a space. I'm going to show you how I do this. I leave a space like this. That way, when I glue the book together, at least, you know, half of this is all glued and I'll be able to turn the pages better. Kind of like what I'm doing right now. So I could turn the pages way better now. So <clears throat> let me so far show you what I've done. And I'm going to see if the, this thing holds the camera better. I'll turn this a little bit like this. So this is my my how to draw book that I did. And uh, I actually recommend everybody to make your own how to draw book like step by step doing, you know, do all the techniques. And you have your own construction book. And that's what you're seeing right now. So page by page, you'll have your own ideas, your own construction. As you can see, is also I mean, I'm the only one that could understand this. And uh, of course, this is just the basic elements and different techniques that I've been practicing. Um, and the, many of these techniques come from my favorite artist, uh, Abdon J. Romero. Um, and he's very much like Andrew Loomis. And uh, some, of the, some of the techniques are, and methods are from different artists like uh, maybe David Finch, Robert Marzulu, and uh, Justin Mass, and there's so many of them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another video um, and tell you all these great artists that you guys could follow that could be, you know, helpful. As you can see, these are all techniques and methods that I've been working on. Ovals, using circles, or just using simple lines, vertical and horizontal lines, just to create a face, stuff like that. So some of the sometimes I do like the technique on the other side of the page and sometimes I'll do a little bit um not all the time like on the back side but and what I did was that this is the, the a better way of doing this just like I'm doing right now I started you know looking at uh, Abdon J. Romero's uh, videos, his uh, tutorials. And then what I did was I did step by step the process that I did, that he did. Then I, you know, kind of like blank this, this side. So that way this will be glued. And uh, I'm going to show you what I did here, which is really fascinating the way he did this. Um, he started out with a vertical line and a horizontal line. Then he did the, the top of the head. And then he started doing more lines, like another horizontal line for the eyebrow line, another small horizontal line for the nose, and another horizontal line for the chin. Now, don't worry about this part over here because once you start, you know, rendering the face, you're probably going to make either pass this a little bit or maybe bring it in or just a little bit upward. And then I noticed what he did that 
he started doing the segments for the eyes, with like little tiny vertical lines for the eyes. And then right here, he started from the nose all the way up, the same attachment. And then he did the mouth. Then, of course, the chin. Probably he bring, you know, the chin, you're going to have to bring it up a little bit because you want to have, you want to have the, the proportions well done, you know. And then from there on, he started doing, for example, after he did the, the eyes and the nose and all that and the mouth, he started doing the segments, which are the planes of the forehead right here, number seven. As you can see, I numbered them. And then the cheekbone over here, and then the outline of the jaw. Then all you have to do is start doing the whole shape of the jaw, as you see over here. Here, <clears throat> he did, he started working with the uh, box technique. But what I did was, I used kind of like the box technique, but I did it. He started out doing, you know, the segments like this, like a box. But I'd rather just leave it like this, like a vertical line going down and on the vertical. I started with this. This is going to be the planes of the face right here. This side is going to be all chopped on this side. And this will be the side of the head right here. So, so I did it this way. It started with this line over here to, the you know, divide the, the half of the face and then chopped off, of course, because, you know, when you look at a three quarter view of the face, it doesn't look round especially on the three-quarter view. So you have to chop off a little bit, just a little tiny bit. And that's what I did over here. And then I did the jawline over here. And then I started doing the segments for the eyes. Actually, let me write this down. The nose, the eyes. And then after that, the cheekbones. So it's always important when you're doing... Um, the techniques and methods actually number them so that way you won't get confused and It's always good to have your techniques made in a book like I'm like I just showed you right now because that way you can always go back and look at your techniques and your methods and uh, You can actually change the methods which I actually you know, I kind of like experiment um, Different styles of methods like for example um, Abdon Romero used the box. I actually use just lines only, you know. And it's almost the same thing, like you see. It's the same similar style, except that I just used the lines instead. And that's the same thing when he did the, the uh, started out with the center of the face. Uh, he started out with the top of the head, and then he did the, the cross. But I did it differently. What I did was I did the vertical line, horizontal line, then I did the shape of the head, and then I kind of rounded off right over here. So then after that, I started doing the eyebrow line, the nose line, and then the chin line. Then everything just little by little starts taking place, and you start forming the head. Now let's go to the next page. Over here is the same technique like I showed you before, and I got to divide this a little bit because I'm going to glue this. And I'm going to show you how I how I glue my my how to draw book. And here <clears throat> is almost like the box shape, but except that I did um, you know how do you call it horizontal lines for the features. I started out doing the uh, like for example, I started right here this side, you know, the eye line here, the eye line going here, vertical line, and then over here the line for the plane of the forehead. Now, I didn't do this too well because what I should have done is should have made the, the plane of the face a little bit closer. So that way I do the eye closer to that plane line right here. And then I do add the other eye here, just like you see over here. The same technique that you see here is the same technique that you see here. It's the same process. As you can see, I actually put an arrow. Then the same thing like the other page is the same process. And this is the finished result from one to A, B, C, D. And this is the, the last of the process. And, if, and you're going to see that they're numbered. Every uh, part of the face is numbered. And if you actually look at Andrew Loomis's book, um, you will notice that uh, he actually numbers every part of the face, whether it's the three-quarter view, 
or the front view, it really doesn't matter. Always keep in mind that when you're drawing the three-quarter view, like over here, <coughs> always keep in mind that the face is perspective. You know, you're looking at sort of like a perspective. This side of the face, you're going to see less, and this side of the face, you're going to see more. And, of course, this eye is going to be a little bit closer to the plane over here. This eye here is going to be closer to the center of the or the center of the face over here, as you can see. So I'm going to make this a little bit darker so you can understand a little bit more. Make this just round off. Always keep in mind that when you look at a face, whether you're using reference or anything like that, try to, um, for example, uh, observe the curve of the features. Like you can see there's a curve. For example, if you were to draw a face looking upward, you're going to make the curve like an arch going upward and a vertical line. If you were to make a face uh, looking down, then you're going to, you know, do the same thing, but the curve is going to go downward. Pretty much like you see. And you, you actually use this in the, either when you're doing the circle technique or the uh, oval technique. <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do now is gonna, just going to show you how I make my own how to draw book. So I take my glue and the book that I'm working on. I'm going to show you how I do this. This is the book I'm working on. My own how to draw book. So see where the line I did here, where I did the line here. So I'm just going to glue like maybe two lines in order to glue the page together all the way to the corner of the page. And then I'm going to paste it together like, like this. I'm going to bring it in closer. I'm going to try to make it level. Keep pressing it until it stays nice and put and nice and level. Now I'm going to take the next page. I'm going to glue again. All the way to the top. Probably like three, but make sure that you start one, two, three lines. Don't go overboard because then you won't be able, once the pages are, when it's dried, you won't be able to turn and you won't be able to see your drawing or your technique. So it's better to start really at the edge like I'm doing right now. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually leave this one for the front page. Then I'm going to do, I'm going to start putting this one closer to the edge. And then I'm going to start, um, you know, pressing it so that way it'll stay nice and glued. And here we go, there you go. It's not gonna be perfect, perfect, but this is better than anything. You know, it's better to have your own how to draw book with your own techniques or anything that you actually followed on, whether it's on Google or on YouTube. Always keep everything on record, you know, keep a record of every technique and every method that you do. Then after that, you have your own how to draw book. So now I'm going to paste this one, and this is going to be my front page for now. Because there's always a chance that I might like another technique, another method, and then I'll start all over again, draw, you know, start sketching more techniques and more methods, and then probably glue it on top of this book again. But I don't want to make this too thick. I, don't, I just want to make it normal, like, that's it. I don't want to make it too fat, like too thick. Otherwise, I won't be able to turn the pages. So once it dries, and you know, I'll be able to look at the pages, even though this is already glued, the rest of the pages. 
but it's just this I gotta wait. These three pages, these three last pages that I did right now, that I glued up right now, I gotta wait. I don't wanna turn the pages because otherwise it'll, it'll start, it'll probably be a big mess. So it's I'm gonna wait till it dries and then I'll show you later on how the book came out. You're gonna notice that when you do these type of books, it's not gonna be perfect because you know, you're gonna see a little bent but like I said, guys, it's better than anything. So let me show you another book that I did, which is uh, my character design book. It's called My Drawings from Beyond. I don't just made up a name. And this is the first book I've done. <clears throat> Once I'm satisfied with the other drawings, then I'm going to actually make more books on it. So this is the first, you know, book that I did of my own characters and uh, reference drawings and stuff. So let me show you pretty much what I did. See, it's all glued, as you can see. And these are my drawings. And of course, I left some space, just like, like I showed you before. I leave like a little space. That way, when I turn the page, it will turn. All you have to do that when you when you make your drawings, you paste it together and uh, just make sure it doesn't go overboard. You don't want to glue it too much because like maybe two strips of glue, like two lines of glue would be good enough. And uh, you'll be able to see your drawings like right now I'm showing you. So these are, this is the first, my first, um, let me see if the camera, the, there you go, it's more better this way. This is my, my, my first uh, character book that I did. And I showed you guys before these drawings, except that it wasn't glued together like a book. So I'm showing to you right now that's all glued like a book. So you could do this, guys. You can make your own, you know, your own character books. All you have to do is be creative, you know, just uh, get some Elmer's glue and make sure you get the uh, extra strong formula glue, which is way better. You don't want to use anything like uh, rubber glue because it's not going to work. It's going to turn it into a big mess. This is way better. The only problem with this is that you have to wait till it dries. Probably maybe in an hour, everything will dry. Nice, nice and dry, not wet, you know. And uh, you can make your own how to draw book or your own character design books. For example, I plan to... Um, I'm going to paste these drawings also together, but first I want to probably redo them. Some of them I got to redo them to make it more better. And uh, I'll probably make this into a book. Now, let's go to the book I wanted to show you, which is really cool by Tom Richmond. And I actually recommend everybody to get this book. It's if, if you're into like um, drawing funny faces, uh, character design. This is the book to get. You have to get this book. Now, because of the camera angle, I'm going to have to, you know, show you page by page. So let's see how th this goes. Um, this is the, the first page right here. Here we go with the dogs. They just never stop barking. It's incredible. Um, bear with me. I think this is the artist that created the book. No, actually it's him, I'm not really sure. Well, it's actually him, old, or and this is when he was younger, I guess. Look at that. He did all these cool characters, uh, the James Bond characters. Like for example, you got Sean Connery here. I forgot this guy's name. Um, uh, Crosby or something, I don't know. There was another James Bond. There's, um, what's his name, Roger Moore. And this other James Bond character. I mean, look at... He does a whole bunch of cool characters. And he shows you how to do comparison, you know, comparison to the mild to wild. How to, you know, exaggerate the face. That's uh, Indiana Jones. Let me get something to drink because my, my voice is getting dry. All right.
right. No. As you can see, he's got, you know, character. The way he draws. These are just like famous people he does, but very character, like very funny face, like. Then hopefully, I hope he makes a book about drawing um, the figures also in funny style, you know, ma like Mad Magazine style. Here's the, the technique and the method, how to draw. You know, he'll give you an idea. Pretty much what I've been showing you guys. Everything all leveled. Eyes, nose, mouth. Here's a cool drawing by Brad Pitt. And this, this guy, I forgot his name. I think, oh yeah, uh, from the, the doctor in the house. You Laurie, his name. And then he gives you an idea of different shapes of faces that you can actually use, how to draw the face and heads. So I have to like bear with me, you know, because of the camera angle, I have to, you know, show you page by page. That is an awesome drawing of um, Mary with children. I forgot the name of the guy. There's Madonna. That's uh, Jack Black. And this guy is really good. He gives you an idea how to do character. I bought this book because I really like uh, Mad Magazine. I always admire Mad Magazine. I just can't draw. I don't know. I'm not very good drawing, you know, like uh, character des design. You know, if somebody asked me to do it, I'll probably do my best, but it's not going to come out as good as this guy. I mean, this guy's got good techniques and good ideas how to do character design and stuff. And this is a pretty cool technique. You start out with the uh, the eyes, the nose, sort of like a T form. As you can see, that'll give you an idea how to do the eyes and the nose, the different shapes of nose. And of course, I've done I've done I've done some videos on drawing noses, and it's basically you know triangles or pyramid shapes, you know. You can tell that he's very, very creative with uh, different um, characters, the way he draws the characters. All you have to do is pretty much like I've been showing you, everything by grid lines. And then, as you can see, you can make the, the face more skinnier to make it look funny and give it more shape. Like over here, like you see over here, over here, looks like a light bulb, kind of. Or a triangle, but in a form like a light bulb. If you look at it, if you observe it, it's like a triangle, an upside upside down triangle. But the shape of the head kind of reminds me of a light bulb. So it's pretty cool. This would look more like a pin, like one of those pins that they use for the bowling alley or something like that. And this is a big, big triangle, but chopped on the top. So it'll give you an idea how to big how to draw a big gigantic person and stuff here we have a wide face over here everything here is all white especially here the other face and then you got the top of the head is all white and then you got the um the jaw on this side is all white He, he actually gives you a you know an idea of the skeletal part, but kind of like character you know character design on a skeletal. You see, it's all mostly cartooning and character de design and stuff. So This is an awesome drawing he did. 
That's uh, what's this this guy from uh, the Daily Show, John Stewart. Great drawing of Einstein. There's Lucy Ball. I love Lucy character. Yeah, I don't know if you guys remember the magazine, Mad Magazine. Probably most of you probably do. But believe it or not, these are the type of drawings and methods and techniques that they probably did for Mad Magazine. Wacky faces and funny faces. Now, I got to admit, I used to buy those magazines. I used to crack up and I used to love looking at the work, the artwork. Here we have the nose again, different shapes of the nose. To some people, nose is not, they're not easy to do. So it's, it takes a lot of practice uh, trying to draw noses. This guy, he's really awesome doing all these, uh, these type of drawings. So I'm going to go a little faster because uh, I want to do another tutorial. If there's some quiet, peace and quiet, I'll be able to do a tutorial. Let's see what happens. Let's see how that plays out. And maybe I might draw, do something here with the book, as you can see, the technique, different shapes and heads, and the eyes. So it's very explainable. It's like a how to draw step by step, little by little. How to draw different faces. I like the way he did this right here. It's awesome. So now we're gonna see if I can find that page I wanna show you guys. I'll draw the eyes, eyebrow.
and hair is not easy to do but this gives you an idea how to do the hair as you can see and see how like I mentioned before you got to follow the direction where the hair goes the flow of the hair and I really actually recommend everybody to actually use reference when uh, drawing hair because hair is not easy to do I also have a lot of problems I go through a lot of trouble trying to draw hair. It's not easy. So this is this will be a very good book in drawing hair. Even though there's other books I gotta show you that actually gives you a, an idea for cartoonists or comic books how to draw hair. As you can see, the hair is going down, and then as it's flowing down, it's going in different directions. Like, for example, it tells you not to do and to do. Over here, you can tell, let, let me give you a, an, a sense of an idea what he's trying to explain here. You can see that the hair look is flowing good straight down. And this one doesn't look so good. It's like going straight down, but all in the same directions. So it doesn't look more reali you know, realistic. On this side of the face, it looks more realistic if you can tell the flow of the hair it's got nice movement it has a nice balance over here you know it's going straight down and then at the same time it's a lot of scribbling over here so you, a lot of artists do that i used to do stuff like that too do a lot of scribbling for the hair so now i'm actually changing my way of doing hair i'm doing more like curvy lines but i still need a lot of practice with hair so this side of course looks better than this side over here and when you're drawing like hair like this gives you a, a, a sense of understanding of how the hair goes in different directions as you can see over here see kind of like a us like when you're seeing like a, a structure of a DNA or something like that, or maybe a, how you call those things, a macaroni or something like that. It's the shape of a macaroni, but anyway, but it's just an example I'm actually using here. But you can see there's more lines here. There are lines flowing this way, and there are lines flowing this way right here. And, of course, you don't see that much over here because the hair is covering over here. So it gives you a sense of movement. And that's what's really important when you're drawing hair. So let me just keep going. This is very important, doing the neck. And just like I always do on my drawings, the artery over here, the neckline. And then the Adam's apple. You don't want to do a neck like this. That's that's a no-no. This is more better. But even though this is not perfect, but this is a better explanation how to do a neck. And this is a very good chapter here, drawing hands. It's always important to you know how to draw hands. It gives you an idea how to draw hands. This is the, um, sort of like a, a basic, but this is the correct way of doing hands right here. It tells you right here the do not and over here the do. So it's giving you an idea of what to do, hand movements and uh, And of course, the, you know, the, the center of the hand is sort of like a block shape. Some people actually use like maybe a circle for the center of the, of the hand. And then they start doing the fingers little by little, step by step. You can tell here is, you know, it's giving you an idea of a drumstick over here, drumstick over here.
Yeah, this guy is really good when it comes to character character drawing or comics or Mad Magazine. He is one of the best. He can actually create any person into a cartoon or comic book style character. Mad Magazine style. Now, this is a pretty cool technique, shows you step by step. As you can see from the character or the person he's actually drawing, he starts out with the eyes. As you can see, step by step, the eyes. And then after that, he starts doing the, um, the eyelids. Then the nose. Then the bottom of the nose. And then... Um, he does the mouth, as you can see, it's step by step, 9, 10, 11, the corners of the mouth, 12, the bottom of the mouth, 13, I think it's um, the lips, yeah, he does the lips, the, the upper lip, then he does the bottom of the lip on number 14, and then he does the chin, right here. And he starts little by little doing adding more details on every step by step so this is a very very good explanation how to do character design then of course the face doesn't look like that but he kind of exaggerates it and that's what um, character design is like right? exaggerating the face make it look funny make it look really you know wacky like kind of So this is the original face, and this is the character design that he did, step by step. I mean, it's, I think it's a very simple process that he does. Right here, we got a character over here. Um, I think it's a Hispanic guy. But you can see he exact he got the features, you know. Then he started exaggerating the cheekbones, the mouth, the jaw. He did over oh, he kind of exaggerated the jaw over here on this side, and then he exaggerated over here. So you could capture. I, I would guess that you could actually capture the the features, but then you know you could exaggerate after that, make it look wacky, make it look funny, whatever you know. It's got the same character, the same eyes, but in, in, a, in a sort of exaggerated form of character that he did here. So I like the way he did that. You can tell he used the um, sort of like a block on the top, Looks like a like an upside down bottle. I'm not really sure, but it's like a some type of shape that he did for this face. Uh, same thing he did over here. He used a uh, an oval here. Then he did a another big oval right here. And then then after that he came with this. From this to this to this. So I'm going to see if I can do this method that he was uh, showing us. I'm going to give you the way I would probably do it. So let's start. And let me see. I need a new page here. And we're going to get some ink. So the way you can see it more clear. I get my eraser ready. So I'm gonna give you an idea what he's how he does character design. What I would do is I would start like always with a line, you know. And then I'm gonna make some eyes here, another eye here. 
I'm gonna make this an ink. And what was the next thing he did? He did the eyelids on the bottom of the eyelids. And then after that, he started doing, I would probably make another line going down this way, or maybe use a little bit, some measurements, even though I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit, then I'm going to make a big nose, a funny big nose. I'm gonna, remember, everything has to do with exaggeration. Then after that, I think he started out, let me turn the next page, because I want to do exactly like Richmond did. I'm going to start uh, forming half of the smile that he did. And then I'm going to make it a little bit more different. I'm going to make like maybe a buck tooth or something. I'll go buck tooth here. And then, so I'm going to do this. Nose. And the top of the mouth. And I forgot the top of the lip. I remember when you're doing the lips, when you always, you know, always start from the center and then kind of like a V curvy form. And then little by little you start shaping the lip. So I'm going to do exactly the way he did it. So I'm going to finish the bottom of his mouth, which is the bottom of his lip. And then what's the next thing he did? He did the jaw. So I'm going to do that little ball shape for the jaw. And then I'm going to start doing the eyebrows, a little bit exaggerated. Maybe this one would be a little bit down. And this one maybe a little high. That's what I'm going to do. And what was the next thing he did? Let me see. Oh, he did the shape of the face. But I'm not going to do it like a normal person. I'm going to exaggerate it, kind of like what he did. Uh, yeah, something like that. So. And then maybe the hairstyle, um, maybe the hair going upward a little bit. I'm going to make him a little bit different. And then I'm going to start working with the ears. Probably exaggerate the ears a little bit. And I don't know if he did the neck. Let me check if he did the neck. Yeah, he probably did a small body or something. Because it doesn't show that he did. Oh, yes, he did. He did right here. See, he did a small body. So, yeah, once you when you start doing character design, you could actually make the closing and like the body smaller. And this is mostly done like in Mad Magazine or something. So he's looking this way. And then, you know, once you have that, all you have to do is, you know, do all the rest of the details, like add more, uh, facial features, like for example, age him up a little bit more. Thicken his eyebrow a little bit. Now erase a little bit this over here. Well, since this eyebrow was is you know facing upward, what I should have done was it's already too late because I marked it in pen. I should have made the eye a little bit more rounder, like he's really opening, but it's already too late, so I'm gonna have to leave it like that. And make you know, some frowning 
age. Usually when people frown, you can tell there's like a frowning on top of the head. And then fix, you know, a little bit the jaw, and the chin. The ears. Fix the eyes a little bit. Now, uh, this didn't come out so so good. I know I could do better than this, but you know, this is just a a tutorial showing you if you want to do it, you know, the mad magazine style. Like the funny face style, you know. Um so I really actually recommend you guys to get the book. It's a, it's a very good book. I mean, you know, it's like you really got to, you know, really focus. It's not easy. You know, everything takes practice. You got to practice every day. And do the corners of the nose, fix the nose, the bottom of the nose. And then, of course, we'll make the buck tooth over here. Maybe just add a little bit small teeth right here. Finish off his mouth. I really like this pen because this pen actually gives you a... It's better than the Sharpie. The Sharpie is okay. Uh, no, actually, this is not a Sharpie. This is the brush, but the problem is it just it ran out of ink. So I got to buy me a new one. But this ha this is really good. I mean, it actually gives it a nice flow when you're... If you really want to do some inking... And of course, he's got dimples. You can tell the cheekbones. He's got these dimples and the cheekbones. So we got, so far, a funny, could be an office guy, ready to go insane, who knows. Like, <laughs> I feel like messing around here, you know, like. Yeah, just be creative, you know, try to. Maybe some circles on his tie, something, you know, really wacky, something really weird. His boss would probably tell him, I don't like that tie. Why you came to work with that tie? And because I really feel like it. <laughs> I don't like your, uh, your attitude today, Ernie. I don't know. I've been thinking of giving you a raise. And Ernie replies, I don't care, man. I don't care if you give me a raise or not. I'm just going to play around and not work today. <laughs> so, yeah. And there you go. That's actually how you do a character drawing for if you want to do, how do you call it, Mad Magazine or something like that. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm going to do some more Andrew Loomis techniques and uh, practice. It's, everything has to do with practice.